the monitor set up and it's connected to my Xbox Series X and just starting up Forza here and just to give you an idea with the intro starting up it looks pretty cool see for yourself obviously replicating the middle area of the screen and colors look really good you have to admit Hi guys, they were unboxing and setting up a product from a company called Govi. This is the Flow Pro Light Bar. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I've unboxed a previous product from Govi, and this was the Immersion TV backlight. And that involved me sticking an LED strip all the way around the back of the TV. And there was a camera pointing to the front screen. And it tried to mimic some of the colors on the LEDs to give a more of an immersive feel when you're watching TV. Now this is a similar product, but this one consists of two light bars that you put on either side of your TV. The other product was aimed at TVs between 55 and 65 inches, whereas this one is aimed at TVs or monitors under 45 inches. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. And now for the giveaway. Govi are giving one of these ProFlow light bars to one winner. Really easy to enter. All you have to do is be a subscriber to this channel, follow us and Govi on Instagram, and leave a positive comment followed by your Instagram handle so we can verify your entry. The giveaway runs for four weeks and ends on Saturday the 22nd of May at 23.59 GMT time. One winner will be selected in June and contacted directly. The competition is open to the UK, Europe, Canada and US. All conditions must be met to be in with a chance to win and good luck in the competition. You get a user manual which is all in English and a customer support card so if you had any issues you can contact them. You get some foam pads that you use to stick on your screen and that helps to calibrate the device. You get two sets of mounts. These two are used to mount directly onto the back of the TV so they've got a mounting point there. They've got sticky pads on the back so they can be stuck directly on the back of the TV. And then you've got these two. These are stands and you can put the light bars on them so the light bars can be placed on a TV unit so they don't have to be stuck to the back of your TV. You get a power adapter, DC connection on here, cable length on here is 173 centimeters. The output here is 12 volts, 2000 milliamps. Bit of annoyance with this, obviously it's not five volts and it doesn't have a USB connection point. So you can't plug the light bars into your TV directly if it had a USB port at the back. You get a camera and this can be placed either at the top of the TV or underneath. The camera on here, this comes out about 11 centimeters. It's a 1080p camera. Obviously the camera is needed to analyze the picture so you can try and mimic the colors onto the light bars. Now there's sticky pads on here. I don't like the idea of having sticky pads here. They should have had some way of sort of clipping it on so you don't have to stick anything directly on your TV. I could understand if you're gonna stick it from underneath, but if you're sticking it on top, you may touch some of the screen with the sticky point there. So previously with the immersion light, what I did, I just got one of their boxes that came in the packaging and just stuck it onto the bottom here and just clipped it into position. Cable length on here is 97 centimeters and good thick cable on here and a USB connection point. You get a control box, power buttons here, color buttons here if you wanted to have a static color. You got a music sync and dimmer button here and then an LED light indicator. Looking around the side, You've got two connection points, so a Type-C connection point for the light bars and a USB connection point for the camera. Looking underneath, sticky pad so you can stick it to the back of your TV. And then looking on the other side, you've got the DC power in and a microphone point there. All plasticky build to it and button quality seems okay. Next we have the two light bars. The light only comes on one of the sides. It's a triangular finish on each of them. And looking at the back, you've got a clip point for if you're using the mount to clip onto the back of your TV. Size of the bars is 25 centimeters in height and the width is four and a half centimeters. Cable at the back, there's lots of cable. So looking at the connection point, you've got a type C connection point and this area here is 16 centimeters. And then for each light bar, you've got 187 centimeters and quality of the cable feels good. Now I'm at my wall mounted TV and first of all let's place the camera on just at the top there. Camera needs to be installed on the middle of the TV. The branding's over here, this gives me an idea where the center point is and it's just up there. So there's a sticky bit just along the bottom bit here. If I peel that off, that should be sufficient to hold this in position. If it's not, I'll just peel off the bottom bit there too. So now coming in, middle is just about there. 
So there you go, the little bit of sticky pad on the side there is enough to hold it in position. Both the light bars are gonna be mounted onto the back here. So you can see a slight hole there and that just hooks onto position here and then it can just be stuck on. So we'll just take the sticky pad off here and I've cleaned the surface here already and it's around the middle area and we'll just stick it on and that's it. That's firmly in position now. I've installed the second light bar just over here. Same process as before. I have rooted some of the cables above here and power wise, I've got a conduit area there and that runs down below to another socket. Let's get this connected up. So the power's just coming over here, plug that in. And then you've got the point for the light bars, which is a type C connection and then USB for the camera. And that's it, that's connected up fully now. And let me tidy up some of the cables and let's get this powered on. TV's in position now, and this is what it looks like, obviously with the camera hanging off it. Now we need to take the foam pads and we need to put three along the side here, one in the middle and three along the side there. And that's just a matter of taking the sticky bit off and then we just place it right in the corner. And let me add the others in now. The foam pads are in position, as you can see now. Now let's turn on the power. This is what you're initially presented with. So if I turn on the TV, there you go. So I've got my PlayStation 5 running on the TV. Now, just out of the box, without any calibration, just to show this, if I move across, you can see the colors automatically do change as you're going along. Now, if I quickly move, you can see there's a slight delay. Obviously, that's not a surprise. It's not intercepting the signal. It's working off the camera, trying to process the image on there and trying to replicate the color. So obviously, there will be a slight delay on there. Let's make a start at setting this up. So I'm at my Android phone. If I go to the Play Store, the app we're after is Govi Home. I've already got it installed, so let's open it up. You can see the other Govi products I've got in there, so other LED strips. So if I now click on the plus here and we go to indoor lighting, scroll down, and the one we're after is this one, H6054. Now it's asking to enable Bluetooth. If I turn that on, this is what we're presented with. It's picked up the device straight away. If I select it and we just click done. Now we're at the configuration stage. So first of all, we need to identify which light bar is on which side. So if I click off there, so it's on the other side. So let's switch positions. If I turn it on and off, there you can see position correct. Now it's searching for Wi-Fi, so we can connect to our Wi-Fi network. So let me enter in my password off camera. Now we're at the calibration stage and it's just saying to turn on the lights. Obviously we've already got them on. See so if I click ready now, it's asking where the camera is installed. I've already said you can install it on the top or the bottom, but I've installed this one on the top. Click confirm to that. Now it's saying follow the directions indicated in the picture. I'll click got it. And we just want to marry up the corners here. So one corner's there, another one's over here. And now we fix the field of vision. So we've dragged the four points to the corner. So next to that, now it's saying adjust the middle points to the border. So that's the side ones. So that one, that one, and then finally this one. Submit to that. And there you go, calibration successful. Simple as that to get up and running. Now it's all calibrated. Let's take the sticker off at the side just comes off and luckily doesn't leave any sort of residue on the screen. Now the device is calibrated, I thought it's worth showing how this system works. So you know there's a camera here and it's going to scan the picture here and then change the colours accordingly. Now the way this works, it only focuses on the area over here. It doesn't change according to the sides and really the lower part there, more the middle and top area. And now the proof of that is if I take a card, a yellow card, place it here, you can see nothing happening in terms of the color changing. And now you can see color goes stronger, move it up. If I move it across, fades away, bring it down again, it's gone again. So this gives you an indication really of the area that's covered. It's just this sort of region here. And if I bring it down, there you go, it fades out. Let me show you around the app now. So coming in the corner here, you've got a settings option, and this is where you can rename the device. Then you've got switch positions, and this is where you can switch the light bar positions around if they were the other way around. 
Wi-Fi settings, you can change them there. Calibration, so you can recalibrate the device. Then you've got user guides on setting up for the Amazon and the Google devices. MAC address below that. Then we've got hardware version, product model, and delete device. Back from here, then you've got controls for the light bars. If I click there, it turns them all off. Click it again, turns it on. Then you can control individual ones. If I press that, it turns off. Press that one, that one turns off. And then we can turn them both on at the same time. Then you've got Govi Light Studio. You've got some different color schemes that you can apply on here. Back from there, then you've got timer. And you can set timers for this to turn on and turn off. And then you've also got wake up timers and sleeping timers. So if you wanted to gradually have it coming on in the morning, you could have that. Or in the evenings, just gradually fading out and then turning off. Back from here, then you've got brightness. So if I turn that down completely, that's the minimum brightness. So if it was a bit too much for you, you can just take it down. Then you've got DIY. If I click on that, this lets you set up your own sort of style on here. So you've got different effects, three shown here, fade, jumping, twinkle. And if I click on there, there's the other ones available. And then you've got speed. So you can have different speeds for these different effects. And then coming below, you've got colors. So you can add these colors in and then it'll alternate between those effects. So if I apply that, and there you go, it's alternating between the different effects on here. Let's come back from there. Let me select music. And this is the different music sync options. And looking below that, you've got sensitivity as well. So you can change the sensitivity. You can see it changing as I'm talking as well. And auto color. So if you wanted it to alternate between colors, you turn that on. Or if I turn that off, it will just stay at the static color, which you can set down below here. Now, if I keep it on auto color, and I'm gonna flip between the different music sync options and just play some music at the same time so you can see the effect and what it does. There you go. Personally, I like the vivid one. Looks pretty cool with the different colors coming up. Next, we've got video. And if I go over to that, you've got two options, game and movie mode. And this is where the camera comes into action and it will process what's on the screen. You've got saturation level as well. So if I take that down, it has a very subtle effect. If you look and between the different modes, that's what you see. Next, we've got color. And this is where you can set custom colors for each of the light bars. And if I untick one of them and then click a color and then click the other one, there you go. I can have specific colors on there, select them both. And then if I click over, you can see it flipping between the different colors. You've got color selection here as well. And then you've got warm white, cool white. You've got a color wheel. So there's a palette here. So you can flip between the colors on the palette. If I scroll across, you've got a color wheel. You can click between the different colors there. Scroll across again, and you've got a color wheel. As simple as that, to change color. Back from here, then you can save that color. So when you turn off the device and turn it back on again, it'll come on with that color. Then you've got my colors. This is where you can just create your own colors from the color wheel, and then save them away, like so. So you've got the selection at the top and then you've got the selection at the bottom. And that's all the options you have available on here. You've seen for yourself, very easy to set up and get configured. Let's test out playing a YouTube video on here just to give you an idea what the performance to expect from this. So this is the same for movies as well or if you're watching TV. And again, lighting levels in the room as well. You wanna keep them low to make the most of the lighting. You can see now, blue is being picked up around the middle and as the camera's panning, it will slowly just start changing color and this is a good example to show as the colors around the middle are changing quite frequently. As I've mentioned, obviously just the middle area is covered here. 
and whatever's around there, it will try to replicate. Color representation is not too bad on here, and it's quite cool as you see it flipping between the different colors as it's coming in and out, rather than a standard LED strip where it's just static or you've just got it on a changing color scheme. The general performance isn't too bad. Now, just to give you an idea what to expect, if there's lots of light in the room, and this is the same for any LED strip, so still you'd see nice amount of ambient light coming in on that, but for the best effect, you really want to keep the lights nice and low or literally dark. So only the LEDs around the TV are working. Now I've started up Fortnite just to give you an idea what to expect. If you're gaming on here, you can see for yourself, picking up the middle area. And if I come down, colors changing accordingly. Let's jump out now. This is probably a good game to demonstrate on only because it's got a lot of color in there and it'll give you a better idea what to expect when you're gaming. So you can see as I'm coming in, it's nicely churned all green. And let's come over to a road area. Come down here. Looking up, there you go, you can see the transition. And you can see the subtle delays. And oh, this is normal. It's just a camera picking it all up and processing it. Looking down, there you go. If I come over to the sort of sandy bit, it's fine here, yellowy. There you go, as it's changing. Next, let me show how to get the device working with both the Google Home voice control product and the Amazon voice control product. So first thing you need to be aware of on the Govi Home app, if I go in there, there is an account you need to set up. So obviously sign up and then that will give the cloud-based connectivity with this to allow you to remotely control it. Now coming on to the Google Home side of things, if I go into that app, the service you're after in here is called Govi Home. Add it in, you'll be asked for your credentials and then it will link in. Now coming back from here, if I scroll down, and it's just here, dining room TV light. Standard functionality is available, so I can turn it off, turn it on, set a static color, and via voice control, I can set a static color as well. And that's it. All sort of standard functionality you would get with smart tech. Similar thing on the Amazon side of things, so if I go into the app here, the skill you're after is Govi Home. Again, just link it in, enter in your credentials, and if I go to devices, lights, and it's just over here, so dining room TV light. It's the same thing again, you can turn it off from here, you can turn it back on again, going in there, same as with the Google side of things, you can change brightness levels on there, change the color, and obviously it's only a static color, you can't go between modes or anything like that. So the functionality is there, and again you can call out to your devices, the voice control ones, and get it to make changes accordingly to how you want it. You're not limited to just using the light bars on a TV, so you can attach them directly to a monitor. I've got my 27 inch monitor here, and you can see size wise it's literally perfect. So with the mount on the back here, it can literally just slot straight on. Now I've already mentioned earlier that you get these stands as well, so that's ideal on either side. So to put that into the stand, you just got to ensure the cable comes out at the front here, and it just slots like that onto the stand, so it's like so. So obviously with this, you wouldn't have the light facing directly at you, you'd have it facing the wall, so the light would bounce off the wall at the back. So let me get the light bar set up with my monitor. We can see what the performance is like on there. Now I've got the monitor set up and it's connected to my Xbox Series X and just starting up Forza here. And just to give you an idea with the intro starting up, it looks pretty cool. You can see for yourself, obviously replicating the middle area of the screen and Colors look really good, you have to admit. And there you go. It's so nice that they're quite small lights in one respect. So if you've got smaller TV or you want to use it in your gaming setup with your monitors, it would work quite well. Couple of points to mention. If you're concerned about your privacy with that camera pointing down, Obviously, you don't have to have that camera configured on your Wi-Fi. You can use the device directly on Bluetooth. And in terms of functionality, it's good they're allowing you to use it with Bluetooth. Pretty sure Govi is not doing anything with the footage and it's not being streamed back to them. But then at least you've got that option of not opting in for having it onto your Wi-Fi.
Nice, it works with smart tech as well, so you can set it to a single color via that or even turn it off. You got timers on there as well. In terms of functionality, it would have been nice if you could go beyond the center, you could go to the sides as well. So if I could configure it so any colors on this side were appearing here on that light bar and the same on the other side. I think that would have been really cool. But what you've got isn't too bad. You've got the middle area covered. Color representation isn't too bad, I'd say. It wasn't perfect in any way. You can see for yourself, it's trying to do its best it can. And in terms of performance, Obviously, if you've got fast moving action going along, you will see it trying to catch up. It's literally a second or less, uh, and you can tell for yourself as it's transitioning. But the effects wise you're getting on here, probably far superior than a standard LED, because a standard LED would be, would be multiple colors just randomly flowing, or just a single color on there. So effects wise, it's good. And I think performance wise, not bad for what you're getting. Sega, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards. I'll have some more cool tech. And drop me a like, as it really does help the channel out. And let me know what you thought of the product. Thanks for viewing, and see you in the next one.